Oh yeah. There it is. <laughs> it's a very important tool. Oh, cool. So people are going to be crying that, oh my god, you destroyed an $1,800, $1,900 video card. Yeah, this was actually a last year engineering sample. So like this card, we already do, uh, went uh, through all the validation. And we cannot sell this board anymore. It doesn't have a heating, doesn't have anything. It's even like the power design is a little bit different. So it doesn't have commercial value. So it's allow us to use it for this experiment and indicate in the real practical scenario what can happen if you forget to turn on the over temperature protection. <laughs> right. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the GN Store. The best way to support our independent reporting is through store.gamersnexus.net. This is made possible with your purchases of merch like our GN Media Mod Mat in stock and shipping now and designed with GPU teardown diagrams and grids. Our 100% custom made two-tone shirt is also a great way to help and it's currently on sale. The shirt uses 95% cotton and 5% elastin for a sporty fit with vibrant colors and was designed entirely by the GN team. Learn more at the link in the description below or go to store.gamersnexus.net. So I'm with Tin from EVGA. We've done a few videos here and uh, this you've presented me is <laughs> a, a GPU with a crater in it. Yeah, it's a victim of the somebody forgetting to turn on the over temperature protection back after the bench session and GPU overheat, but the power was never cut off and GPU exploded. Yeah, so we have some demos of that. We, the video will start with probably one of them overheating. We didn't get a giant crater in it, but we got some cracks on the die and then a, yep. a big puff of smoke. Essentially, the, this, this demo to, to show the importance why the thermal protection is in place originally on pretty much every VGA card and motherboards as well and why it is important. Because like we have the people who are trying different uh, extreme overclocking experiments like running nitrogen or even water cooling on the cards, but accidents always happen and sometimes there is no water or like pump failure. And what can happen if you don't turn the protection back on when you finish with your benchmarking? Right, yeah, if, if, you, if you tell it not to protect itself, then it, it'll listen to you. Yes, so. exactly. Uh, so yeah, this one is cratered, and I guess another time this could happen would be like if you forget to pour L2 in the pot, you walk away or something. Yeah, don't, if don't you get distracted, go talk to somebody, and then half an hour you come back to the system, run in with the LN2 pot, no LN2, it will be temperature will be 200C, and GPU or CPU will be that as well. You can see even some like black, oh yeah, black goo come out. So is this like, I guess the top is like a diffusion barrier or something uh, on top of the, the well, silicon? The, no, the top is the silicon. Oh, is it? And the goo is the underfill that's uh, like a glue mm. under the chip. So the humidity and air doesn't get under the chip. I see. Okay. So, but other, actually you can see on that exploded card that there are small little balls, just like you have on the BGA package but much smaller ones okay. that connect the GPU die to the... To the substrate? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's a very important tool. Oh, cool. Rip. Yeah. That's you know the intro, <laughs> intro picture. <laughs> how many people you just hurt right now? <laughs> and actually, you can see like all those shiny things. Uh -huh. That's actually the silicon level. Okay. So the, all those two millions of transistors... Nah, be careful, it's yeah, glass. Nah. So what's the... the is that those copper? are actually transistor. Oh, yeah, the, okay. the, and there you have the copper layers, uh -huh. pretty much like PCB, but much, much, much smaller. Okay. So because they're all the components, all the transistors are on the back side, not on the top side. The top side doesn't do anything. Is it the so is it is the GPU die uh, also BGA to the substrate? Yeah, or but it's okay. not using the solder; it's using the copper bumps. I see. Okay. It's a micro bumps they call it. Cool. And then what are the layers like, do you know, of uh, like when you, you cracked it open just now? So the top layer... Uh, it, it's the biggest layer. Like like uh, they have on the PCB, all the layers the same. Okay. But on the GPU, on the silicon, uh, they have like the biggest layer, which will handle all the power. So it mm -hmm. will connect like uh, power from the uh, PCB, 
like memory power, all, all the like traces that do doesn't need mm. a lot of uh, high speed signals, but you need to carry a lot of power. So that will be top layer, okay. and that will connect all these blocks like uh, around the GPU. And then the next layers they go like more fine, more fine, till they go to the bottom layer, which have actual transistors. Okay. And that will be like what when you hear old like 10 nanometer GPU or CPU or like 7 nanometer. That's where all those nanometers they are right on the bottom of the chip okay because that's why this package called flip chip yeah so you have the actual structures flip down to the pcb and then on the top you have just silicon material which is uh, allowed to transfer the heat to the heat sink mm -hmm. and provide the cooling nice and actually, like when you see like the p uh, beautiful pictures of the silicon like dyes, like all those uh, the like rainbow colors, rainbow color transistors, that's essentially the bottom layer. I see. So the, the bottom layer is uh, pretty close to the contact bumps, I yes, guess. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then they have just in insulation layer, and then they have contact bumps to connect to the uh, substrate. Oh. That was less than spectacular. Yeah, there's no coming back for that. <laughs> he's, he's grabbing another specimen. Hey, do you have the card, that blue? Yeah. Where's it at? Oh, uh, it's always that moment when like you like you have something exciting, and then you want to show someone, and then you're trying to show it, and then like, nothing happens. Like, oh, okay, and and there's one more thing I'll note too. Uh, so we did try to blow up another one, and um, with that one, you thought you were hitting, I guess, OCP? Yes, that? because there is al always not just GPU protection mechanisms, but VRM itself. Mm. VRM will try to protect itself from drawing too much current uh, or voltage, and it will also shut, shut itself off. But it's actually a much higher limit uh, on any overclocking cards, because if you have the limit too low, then you will not be able to run extreme overclocking on the card. It will shut off too early. I also made the simple diagram how the VRM works. <laughs> like on yeah, the uh, overheat signal, like the, essentially we have power controller, we have power stages, we have GPU, and how the uh, over temperature protection works. When the temperature sensor on GPU uh, detects temperature too high, it will toggle the signal overheat uh, output. And then the signal go to the VRM controller and connect to enable signal. When that signal is off, then the whole VRM shut down. I see. So that's essentially a very simple concept how it works. And then about the uh, VDROP, like you have uh -huh. the controller, uh, then you have the power stage, which doing all the 12 volt input uh, goes to the power stages. They get converted to the lower voltage and provided by the big uh, beefy shape to the GPU die. And then there is a two special pin, GPU power and GPU return sense pin. They go back to the controller, and like you can think, like there is some small Oompa Loompa who sits in the <laughs> controller, looks at the voltage, and then if the voltage is not correct what is expected, he will adjust the PWM signal higher so the voltage increases. And if voltage is too low, because for example you're running heavy load like 3D Mark benchmark, then Oompa Loompa will adjust the voltage <laughs> higher to compensate for that. Okay. So that's why I write this very professional guy who is watching this feedback, the sense voltage, okay, and cool. constantly adjust everything in the loop. That's why it's very important to have the correct uh, vSense and feedback. That's one of the first things we test uh, during the power design on e any product, like be it motherboard or graphic card. So Andrew, I guess keep your eyes behind the screen. Oh, yeah. It's got high protection. <laughs> Now he's being used businessman. Now he knows it's going to work. <laughs> That's it. Aww. And this is happening within the controller? Yes. Okay. So essentially you tune the controller, which have different adjustment knobs, like the frequency, how often the, this uh, monitoring uh, loop will be working on. And then also you can adjust, uh, like you can artificially tell 
this guy, like, oh, like, actually the real voltage is 50 millivolt higher than you see. And then that correction will be applied and the whole voltage will change accordingly as well. Okay. Cool. And the switching frequency is so like uh, essentially one of the knobs that controllers uh, have uh, set as well. And then the, you can, d different transient, different speed, how everything works will be affected by the switching frequency. That's why on the older uh, uh, motherboards and VGA cards, often like you need to increase the switching frequency so everything on the VRM side can catch up with the demand from the GPU die. All right, so that's the walkthrough of over temperature protection or the lack thereof. You wanted to add something though. Yeah, basically uh, like over temperature protection is important for the safety reasons and... NVIDIA puts it on there for good reason, right? Yes. So thermal protection is uh, important and uh, all the cards have uh, as enabled as default. And if you want to use maximum fan speed, like we provide in the LM2 bias uh, position, you would uh, best to do that is take that bias and flash it into the normal position on the bias switch okay. or into the OC position. That will remain the ability to go maximum fan speed, but still with all the thermal protections in place. Oh, okay, so is it... So then if you're in the regular BIOS position, but then you... the thermal protection is on. Okay. It's and only it's... disabled when you switch into the LM2 mode, which is red light on the backside right. indicator. And that's when the, all the protection is disabled from the thermal point. So the thermal protection is independent then from VBIOS. Yes, you can use any VBIOS and this uh, control is purely on the hardware on PCB level. Right, right. And I think the coolest, the biggest takeaway here is if you forget to shut down and you leave your system running. Yeah, then that with, will be a very expensive day. <laughs> with XOC BIOS on. And then you RMA your card uh, and you put the cooler back on it, hoping that they won't notice. If you leave a hole in it like that, <laughs> they might notice. Yeah, we will notice. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for this one. Pretty cool stuff. You don't really get to see 2080 Ti's get exploded every day. So thank you for watching that. It was fun for us. And check back for the other videos on Voltage and LLC. Thank you, Tim, for joining me. We'll see you all next time.